What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Center for Stingray Biology. I know I have been MIA for quite some time. I think uh, this is probably going to be the first upload in about a month. A lot of things have been going on around here and um, there's going to be some big changes. We're still in the planning stages of what we're going to do. I will definitely keep you guys updated as I know more concretely what those changes will be. But uh, since I was busy with that stuff, I do apologize for not uploading. I am back and we're gonna slowly start getting back into the swing of things and I will start creating more content for you guys. So thank you for being patient and uh, sticking by me. As you guys know, I have a lot of different breeding projects going on here. Each tank has its own little thing going on there and you know I have plans for the future on what I'm trying to create in terms of strains of stingrays. Not strains but in terms of different forms of hybrids and stuff right. As you guys remember you know we had the albino uh, black diamond in that tank then uh, you know we did some juggling around and I moved them over there. Basically what I was doing was moving those fish into the bigger tank so that they would be able to breed, right? And at the same time, I had also started bringing some other uh, fish over and mixing with that black diamond, right? But something went wrong. There's been a very controversial topic going around in the Stingray hobby for a really long time and a lot of misinformation. You know, I guess everyone just speaks from experience and that includes myself right uh, basically what we do here is a, just a lot of trial and error and learning from experience trying to take that experience and apply it towards future situations to avoid uh, problems right I'm sure you guys are asking what is this problem well there's been um, a lot of issues with stingrays coming in from overseas versus domestically bred and raised right there's been you know people out there myself included having issues with bringing in stingrays from overseas and then having problems in your tank and not understanding what is happening and why um, why it's happened basically uh, for you guys watching who've encountered this you already know where this video is headed there's been problems where when you combine uh, foreign and domestic fish or stingrays they, they, they get sick, okay? And why are they getting sick and what is the cause? Everyone is very confused by it. You know, they, they check their water quality and everything seems to be okay. So they don't understand why uh, the fish are getting sick. The problems can go two ways. It can go, um, the, the incoming fish get sick or your existing fish get sick. But more or less, it's basically the existing fish will get sick, okay? And that's the domestic fish. And we're wondering why, okay? Well, the domestic fish, how can I explain this? It has not been exposed to all the different bacteria, resistant strains of bacteria, and possibly viruses that occur overseas. Uh, a lot of the fish that's uh, in the ornamental industry uh, is captive bred and mostly from farms in overseas, right? So in situations like that, um, where, where farms are medicating their fish, treating it um, to prevent sickness or to even battle sickness, and what happens is a lot of times it creates different strains of viruses and bacteria, or resistant strains of viruses and bacteria. And uh, I'm sure everyone can relate nowadays with the whole coronavirus thing going around. And it's, it's kind of a similar situation. So what happens is our fish at home doesn't have the immunity to fight off what's coming in with those other fish. So even though your water quality is good, they can get sick. Now, does this always happen? No, it does not always happen, <clears throat> okay? It really is like a lottery system or a luck of the draw where it comes from, all right? But now, before I talk any further, I'm gonna show you why we're getting into this topic today okay this is something that uh, I haven't shown you guys in the past but I will show it today because it's happened a few times now I have this guy that I just found it dead there's the albino black diamond and some of the other rays you see they're very active very healthy you know they see me they want to eat okay and I have another one up here so you guys remember when I move these fish in here right 
the albino got beat up a little bit from this bigger female here that I had uh, ended up separating because she was hurting him. But since then, since separating them, he's doing just fine. He's all healed up. And you see these other guys are doing great, right? So can you guys guess who is the new addition in this tank? I think it's a very simple guess here. It's this guy that's not doing so well anymore. What I had tried to do was bring in another fish into this mix. I wanted this female to breed with the albino male. Why aren't the other fish sick? Okay, well, these, let's see. Uh, buh, 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 buh. This, this one here and this one up here came from the same breeder, okay, as the albino. So they share the same, um, not genetics, but they share, they come from the same source. So whatever they could have possibly been exposed to, they already have their immunity. Now, um, let me show you one other thing now. Now I have another ray right here. Okay, now this one was not from the same source, but it was also an imported fish. Okay, now I have import and import, and I had combined them together, and there was no issues right so I figured okay uh, fish from two different sources even though it's not from domestic and not my source from two different sources I had combined them and there was no issues so I figured all right maybe we're safe which is what led me to decide to introduce one of my own fish from my own lines into this tank okay and in the beginning it was doing fine you know um, and then I noticed some nips and some bite marks, right? And I'll show you that. You can see it all around the edge of the disc now. Well, I kind of let it go because I knew that uh, whenever uh, you put a fish into a breeding situation, there's going to be, you know, a little bit of aggression and, and, and some, some minor disc damage, okay? But I didn't expect, you know, the fish to die. Now, what happened was over time, she slowly stopped eating, okay? And had less and less interest in the food. So now this fish has been in this tank about three weeks, I want to say, and it was eating good for the first week. But now, um, today, it's gone. Could it be from stress from, uh, from the male constantly biting her? Yes, it could be, but um, given that that fish is so big, I don't think that damage would have killed her. It would have definitely stressed her, um, but I don't think it would have killed her and then you can see you know There's damage on the tail damage all around the disc damage in the front right there uh, I haven't pulled it out yet, which I will uh, pretty soon and uh, dispose of this fish, but um, I Want to know you know because this is a combination that I want to be persistent about uh, breeding and uh, I have another one that I'm gonna put in there that's also from my own line. And then maybe we're gonna follow along and monitor what's happening here and, and see if the same thing happens, okay? I almost think it will, okay? And if the same thing happens, then I'm proving to you that this whole thing about combining fish is a potential problem, okay? And I'm gonna be making more videos following along this topic because this topic can branch in so many different directions and I want to help you guys understand, you know, where to get your stingray from and how, you know, what's a good source, what's a safe source, what's not a safe source and really help you sort through all the different possibilities. Okay, so let me walk over here and show you, okay, the next one that I'm going to put in there and it's from the same system uh, and they were all raised together. Remember you guys, after I emptied out this tank, I said I was going to start moving some fish over. So I moved some fish over from, from the room that's all the way on the other side that I had all the, the nice uh, hybrid grow outs in there. And I moved it over here. Okay. So this one's a real beautiful one. And uh, she's next up. I don't want to say on the chopping block, but because um, I don't want to lose her. But, you know, that was the whole point of me growing and breeding and I mean breeding her and growing her and raising her 
for the purpose of hybridization with the albino black diamond. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull that one out and uh, I'll probably, you know, give it a good tank cleaning, wipe down all the glass of the tank and, um, and uh, do a big water change. Oh, and in case you guys are wondering, I have a massive UV on this tank. Okay, four lamp total. Uh, it is like uh, 120, 240 watts UV on this system. So you would think that anything that's in there would be dead, right? But um, we we don't know, okay? And uh, it's just very disappointing. And sometimes it just, it's very discouraging when you put all this time and effort into doing something and, and it doesn't pan out. But I'm gonna be persistent uh, and we're gonna, like I said, get rid of that and then move this one over. But I'm not gonna do that today. So let me go grab Oi and uh, she's gonna take over on the camera and then uh, we will pull that fish out. Hey Oi, is it lunchtime? I just need your help for one second. Just help me hold the camera while I uh, pull out that fish that we just lost. Oh, look at that. Kim's holding a book and not an iPad today. Oh, her iPad's out of battery. That's why. All right, hang on. I was just showing everyone at home here what happened, you know, with this tank. And we lost one fish over there. So I'm not going to pull it out now and get rid of it. And I try to explain to everybody at home, you know, what could be the problem. Now, uh, please, I, I mean, I have no definitive proof, okay? And I'm just speaking from experience okay and um like i said we're going to talk more about it in future episodes because i have other experiences as well that i would like to share with you i don't necessarily have much in terms of footage to show you but you've seen some of the fish around here and you don't see the fish around here anymore okay and i'm going to explain why uh but not in today's episode we're just going to pull this out there we go It's such a shame. I've raised this fish for so long, and I mean, I could have gone a different way um, with in terms of breeding this thing. Is it all red? Yeah, it's all red. Okay. So, I mean, I didn't have to go this direction and breed it with uh, with the albino black diamond. I could have bred it with. Uh, my own lines of fish and and not have this kind of result okay now when we pull it up i have a garbage bag ready right here i'm just going to set it down there we go thank goodness and that's it oh well guys I'm glad to finally, you know, be back and uh, uploading for you guys again. It's really sad to start the comeback of the channel with something like this, but I think it's very important information. And honestly, I wasn't ready to start filming again, but because this happened, uh, I wanted, you know, to share this experience with you so that you guys can learn from it as well. But uh, yeah, stay tuned and uh, we will work on more episodes and, uh, you know, I'll try to be there for you as much as I can, all right? So, uh, as always, be sure to like this video if uh, you enjoyed the content, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already, and uh, share it. You know, share this share this video with the world. All right, thank you guys. Take care. I just want to make something clear. What I'm explaining to you here is a theory, right? It's it's a working theory. Is it fact? You know, is it? Uh, do I have scientific data? Um, lab reports and all that, you know, fancy stuff. No, I do not. Okay, but all this is based on experience and it wasn't just a, a one-hit wonder. Okay, it's happened enough times for me to be able to, you know, bring the information together and come up with this theory or conclusion. That's enough evidence to convince me that there is some type of correlation there. And again, like I said, does it always happen? No, it does not always happen. It just depends on, you know, what the fish is carrying. 
and we never know, right? And sometimes it depends on what farm it came from, you know, uh, what breeder or, you know, or what uh, wholesale facility that it went through. It might not even be originally from the stingray. It could be, uh, you know, from something else. It just, at what point, where did the fish stop uh, along its journey to the U.S. Um, or to, you know, what your respective country and what it picked up along the way. Okay, so, you know, again, uh, I'm just here to share this information with you. You know, you guys can do with it what you will. You know, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that, that will debate the topic and say, well, I've, I've had it. Uh, I've combined stingrays and never had the issue. And, you know, that's great. And I'm very happy for you. But in my opinion, eventually something will happen. Okay. Uh, and it's just a matter of when. Okay. So, um, yeah. Um, and, and I, it, like I said, it's happened to me enough that I'm very, very, very cautious about how I combine, you know, my fish, okay? And I just wanted to point that out, all right? But, uh, you know, let's move on with this video.